Kyrie Irving sends the league a warning after being disrespected on Twitter. So Kyrie, uh, it's pretty much just like KD, uh, one of these guys that at any given time may hop in the DMs, may hop on Twitter and respond to you if you're talking shit about him. And I can't be mad at them all the way. I just wish they would... Um, they wouldn't complain about it after, you know, like they, they always say that, yeah, people can't keep our names out of our mouth, but they know that by responding to people online, you're only feeding into that stuff. So you might as well ignore it. Uh, it's guys who get way more negative press than you, uh, or way more unnecessary hate than you in NBA history. And they've all kept quiet, you know, you got to count the blessings. But anyways, uh, there was this tweet from this basketball account called Basketball Forever. So they're pretty big on Twitter, you know, and they were reminiscing about Kyrie's, um, I guess, resume since leaving LeBron. Because we all know he won that championship with LeBron James in 2016, coming, uh, coming back down 3-1 against the Warriors. Uh, like one, uh, one minute left on the shot clock. ISO on the right wing. Steph Curry come here. Has he pulled up three? Cash and yeah, NBA champ. But ever since then, he left the Cavs. Uh, quite surprisingly, because he wanted his own team. A lot of people faulted him for that. I didn't, because you know, in life you gotta figure out. You never know how far you can you can fly until they throw you in the wind. You know, so you he had to go figure out for himself that I right, can I actually lead a team to a championship. Came to find out he couldn't. He joined a pretty successful Boston Celtics team, and they were pretty much most. Uh, more successful without him than with him out there. They made it to the conference finals, uh, lost in seven against LeBron James uh, without him. And then he came back. They lost. Um, they lost to the Bucks in the second round. And then he, he asked out, went to Brooklyn, missed the whole playoffs in 2020. Then uh, he lost in the second round to the Bucks when he got injured. That was probably the year he, he could have captured the championship just because the way KD was playing. Uh, they still had James Harden on the team, but he got injured. Freak injury. That happens. But Kyrie gets injured a lot in the playoffs, like a lot. Uh, then 2022, he got swept in the first round by the Celtics. Uh, he only showed up in game one. He had a great performance in game one, but that was it. Him and KD, they pretty much uh, wet the bed and then missed the plan with the Dallas Mavericks after getting traded. So this is pretty much what the, the tweet was saying. And I mean, that's kind of unnecessary hate because I, mean, I don't even know if that's hate. That's just stating facts, actually. But that was kind of coming out of nowhere because Gary was just, you know, minding his own business. And Gary saw this and he responded to the tweet saying that, yeah, man, just pin this and watch what happens this season. So, hey, uh, do you believe Kyrie can actually go out there and compete for a championship with Dallas Mavericks? I don't think so. Uh, they should make the playoffs this time, though. Like, uh, for such a squad, you know, to... What the Lakers actually did last season does not get enough credit, in my opinion, just because when you throw around a new team at the trade deadline, you don't really uh, get, you know, the training camp to build chemistry and everything with injuries, all that, all the different personalities got to mesh. You got to know where to find, what pocket to pass the ball to, etc. communication on different, so much stuff to figure out. And that usually happens at training camp because none of these teams uh, really uh, practice anymore like that. And they didn't have that. So you could feel that they were completely discombobulated on both ends of the floor. I remember vividly that play uh, at the end of uh, the game. I, I believe it was against the T-Wolves when Kyrie got the ball. Uh, it was winning time. Got the ball, pass it to Luca. Luca passed it right back to Kyrie. Kyrie passed it right back to Luca. Then Luca right back to Kyrie. Then Kyrie, he had like one second left. Oh man, let me let me figure out something. Turnover. It's just because they had no chemistry whatsoever. Him and Luca. And on the defense, even don't even get me started on the defense that they were out there, out there uh, putting on the floor. So now, and they also added some some interesting role players um, like you know Grant Williams. All the guys do. So this should be better, but I don't think uh, a championship is coming. I don't think so. Anytime soon, actually, on the Mavs. Regardless of how good and electrifying Kyrie and Luka can be, it's just not enough. They're not being Denver. I don't think they're even getting past the Lakers with that. Or the Suns, uh, the Clippers, if they're healthy, I'm picking them. The Warriors will be better. Uh, the Kings are ascending. The Grizzlies. Hopefully, Jamarin stays out of trouble. Like, it's just too much in the West. So, 
I don't believe he's on anything. He's just going to make the playoffs and lose in the first or second round. That's what's going to happen. So anyways, man, get in the comment section and give me your thoughts about this whole, uh, pretty much about Kyrie's career without LeBron James and uh, what's the ceiling for this Dallas Mavericks team next season. Uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I appreciate you guys for checking me out. See you guys later. Peace.